Pigs too may be reared indoors or outdoors. But either way, baby piglets need special protection when they are first born, to make sure that they are nice and warm, and to protect them from being squashed by their mothers. Sometimes, because they have so many piglets, they lose track of who is where and may lie on one accidentally. Because of this, the mother pigs, or sows, live in special pens called crates, if they live indoors, for a short time when their piglets are first born. But even if they are reared outdoors, piglets need special protection for the first week or so of their lives, so that they do not wander out and get lost or hurt by other sows or wild animals like foxes and badgers. Pigs, like chickens, can be fed on cereals and kept in very large numbers in one place, especially those that are kept housed all the time. This and the fact that they can rear many piglets in a litter and have at least two litters each year means that pig meat, pork, bacon and ham can be produced relatively cheaply compared to free range pig meat or slower growing and more extensively produced beef and lamb from cattle and sheep. However it's produced, all meat that is going to be used for food has to be killed and butchered in places that are inspected and licensed by the proper authorities. This ensures not only that the meat is safe to eat, but also that the animals are properly treated according to strict rules on their health and welfare. Farmers too have lots of rules they must stick to. Most of them have been set by the European Union and the government to make sure that our food is produced safely and that the countryside is kept the way we like it. There are rules on what sprays and fertilizers can be used and when, rules on the medicines that can be used to treat animals and who may use them, and also there are rules on what farmers can and can't do with their land. That's something they've got used to. During the Second World War, enemy submarines sank many ships carrying food that Britain needed. Many things were in short supply, and so food was rationed to make sure that everyone had enough to get by. But it wasn't much. You'll want your personal ration book now if you want to buy sweets. You can go to any sweet shop. Yes, this one will do, young fella. And for a start, everyone will get the same amount, and that is two ounces a week. Because of this, the government ordered farmers to produce more. They were told to plough up fields of grass to grow more crops and vegetables. Every bit of land possible was needed to produce food. After the war, British and European governments were eager to make sure that food was never rationed again. They set up systems to encourage farmers to produce more food and put more land into production. They were given money to encourage them to drain land to make soils more fertile, to make fields bigger by cutting down trees and removing hedges, and to buy new equipment and buildings. While these schemes work well, they also led to too much of some foods being produced. People, including some farmers, also complained that some of the things that farmers had been asked to do, or told to do, were damaging the countryside. 